What if I told you there's a free drug readily available, a wonder drug that boosts your memory, regulates your emotions, and might even stave off cognitive decline? Sounds too good to be true, is it? Well, it's freely available, but unfortunately not appreciated enough. The name is Sleep. Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Sanjay Arora. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I help you unburden your health. Today, we are diving into a critical topic of sleep and the link between health and sleep. Join me as we explore key factors influencing sleep hygiene and its profound implication for our well-being. Sleep is actually crucial for recharging the brain and maintaining overall health. So let's start by discussing why do we sleep and how does sleep really actually benefit the brain? There are four ways in which we get benefited by sleep. Number one is cleansing and waste removal. During sleep, waste products like certain proteins which are associated with Alzheimer's disease are removed. And also during sleep, there is increased flow of the fluid around the brain which is called as the cerebrospinal fluid. This helps flush out toxin and metabolic waste from the brain. Number two is memory consolidation. Sleep, particularly deep or what is called as REM sleep, is essential for consolidating short-term memories into long-term storage. And this enhances learning. Number three is cognitive function restoration. Sleep restores the balance of neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin. Now, these are transmitters that are actually allowing the brain to function at its best. Now, these neurotransmitters regulate mood, cognition, alertness, and actually help replenishing glycogen. Glycogen is used for cognitive functions, especially during waking hours. Last but not the least is emotional regulation. Sleep actually helps to regulate a part of the brain which is called as the amygdala. Now, this part of the brain actually improves emotional stability and resilience. And sleep actually reduces cortisol levels. Now, cortisol is one of the hormones in the body which creates wakefulness. Now, creating adequate sleep actually reduces cortisol levels, promoting a sense of calm and well-being. These are the four ways in which our brain actually benefits from sleep. So, it's not just something which is being told by our elders that please sleep enough, but actually there is a medical reason behind enough sleep. Now, what should be the ideal amount of sleep? Teenagers who are actually the most sleep deprived today need 8 to 10 hours of sleep. Adults generally require about seven to nine hours of sleep, although there is some variation here. Whereas older adults may do with even six to seven hours of sleep. Let's explore the consequences of sleep deprivation. Number one is cognitive impairment like memory deficits and reduced attention span. It could be, you know, a few minutes or a few seconds and you might have difficulty in concentrating. Number two is emotional instability we become extremely irritable and emotionally reactive. This can be a risk for depression and anxiety. Number three, challenges in decision making. And number four, this can have health consequences of the immune system and risk for cardiac disease and obesity. The number five risk for lack of sleep is neurogenerative risk for Alzheimer's disease. And last but not the least, lack of sleep can be a risk factor for metabolic and hormonal disruptions like insulin resistance, which can lead to diabetes. Is there a flip side to it? Can we get too much sleep? I know we are talking about lack of sleep, but even too much sleep is not a good thing. The ideal amount of sleep varies for each person, like I said, generally between seven to eight hours. Oversleeping has been linked to increased risk for cardiovascular disease and metabolic disorders. So it is important that we find that right balance between less sleep and too much sleep is key to supporting a long-term health and vitality. Today, in our digital age, we know that the use of electronic devices in bed can impact melatonin. Now, melatonin is something that actually induces sleep. Think about it. What is your evening routine looking like? How often do you find yourself scrolling through your phone or watching TV before sleep? Now, these electronic devices actually emit something called as blue light. And the blue light which is emitted by these screens is known to disrupt a natural sleeping cycle by suppressing melatonin production, which makes it harder to fall asleep. Stress is another factor that can wreak havoc in our sleep patterns. When we experience stress, our body releases cortisol. Cortisol helps us remain alert and responsive. But when the stress becomes chronic, this high level of cortisol actually disrupts the sleep pattern by delaying the onset of sleep. One of the overlooked aspects of sleep is nutrition. What we eat plays a significant role in the quality of our sleep. There are three elements in our food that can promote better sleep. Foods rich in magnesium, tryptophan, and complex carbohydrates. Now, what are the examples of food which are rich in magnesium? 
simple things like spinach, nuts like almonds and cashews, and legumes like black beans, chickpeas and lentils. Whole grains including brown rice and whole wheat. These are all ingredients rich in magnesium. Fish, especially salmon, is a very good source of magnesium. Something which all of you would like, dark chocolate, if eaten in moderation, can actually promote sleep because of content of magnesium. Some of the food which are rich in tryptophan are turkey and chicken, dairy products like milk, cheese and yogurt, and certain nuts like chia seeds and sesame seeds. Tofu and soya products are also supposed to be rich in tryptophan. Again, fish, especially salmon, is rich in tryptophan. What are the food which are rich in carbohydrates, especially complex carbohydrates? So whole grain meats like oatmeal, barley, and whole wheat pasta, these are rich in complex carbohydrates. Vegetables such as sweet potatoes and carrots and legumes again like lentils, chickpeas and black beans are rich in complex carbohydrates. Some of the fruits like bananas and apples and some of the common elements like brown rice again are rich in complex carbohydrates. Now if you combine these foods, magnesium, complex carbohydrates and tryptophan, these are all effective in promoting better sleep. So figure out recipes that can bring these three elements together, especially during dinner time. Foods which are rich in tryptophan, magnesium and complex carbohydrates are mentioned in the description below. On the other hand, heavy meals and caffeine close to bedtime are known to disrupt our ability to sleep and to wind down. It's advisable to have your dinner at least two to three hours before your bedtime to reduce pressure on the heart at night. What are the things we can do to promote better sleep hygiene? What practices and habits are conducive to sleeping well? Number one is creating a calming bedtime routine, maintaining a consistent sleep schedule, optimizing our bedroom for comfort and darkness. All these contribute to establishing good sleep. These simple yet effective habits can make a world of difference in how well we sleep and how well we feel during the day. Here are some of the practical tips to improve your sleep. Limit caffeine intake, especially after 4 p.m. Exercise regularly, but don't do it too close to your bedtime. Use relaxation techniques like meditation or deep breathing. And like I mentioned earlier, avoid eating heavy meals late at night. It is very important to keep your bedroom cool, dark and quiet and stay away from your electronic devices as much as possible after 9 p.m. Our sleep pattern should normally follow that of the sun. Rise when the sun rises and sleep when the sun sets. That's called the circadian rhythm. The rhythm of our body should resemble the cycle of the sun. How many of you sleep before midnight? I would think not too many. Because of digitization and the use of our phones, we end up staying awake much later than we should. Try and sleep latest by 11 p.m. Waking up by 7 a.m. so that you at least get between 7 and 8 hours of sleep every night. Remember, rise when the sun rises and sleep when the sun sets. That's the way in which our body is designed to remain healthy and active for as long as we can. As we conclude, I encourage you to reflect on your own sleep habits and dietary choices. Small changes in both these areas can lead to significant improvements in how rested and rejuvenated we feel each day. Sleep is a cornerstone of health and well-being. By understanding its importance, and implementing these strategies, we can transform our sleep and by extension, our own life. Remember, good sleep is not a luxury, it's a necessity. Thank you for watching. If you found this content helpful and useful, please subscribe for more health and wellness related content.